Hello, welcome back to Gifted Guitars. Unless it's your first time here, then welcome. This is a place where I build guitars for people. We are continuing our work today on this Halloween themed guitar. Today's gonna be the last day of painting and spraying and all that stuff. I hope, because today I'm putting the clear lacquer onto the guitar and I'm gonna give it a real generous coat so that none of the paint comes off when I wet sand it later. This whole thing was done in lacquer. Last time I did it with uh, some acrylics and thin lacquer and I put a lot of clear lacquer on this. So hopefully, hopefully it'll come together in the end and, uh, and end up nice and smooth and I can polish it up. And so with that being said, let's start doing some wet sanding and see if we can get this nice and smooth. I should say before I get too deep into this that wet sanding is a new thing for me. Obviously it didn't work for me last time. I've seen conflicting things online about how you should wet sand, how long the lacquer should wait for, all this stuff. So I'm half guessing. Anyway, what I'm gonna be doing is using a spray bottle with dish soap and water in it. And I'm using sandpaper that is made for wet sanding and I'm gonna try and get to a real fine grit because that's what's gonna give us our shine. Went too far again. Right here, you can see I got to the wood, and over here I got to the wood as well. I mean, that's not great. <laughs> it's not good. But um, I'm not gonna stop. I'm gonna keep trying with this. The other side's the one that I'm, I'm actually really the most nervous about because it has all the design work on it. It's the part, like, if it becomes just a decorative guitar that everyone's gonna see. Those two spots are so small that you wouldn't notice them anyway, but here, if I get some white coming through the black, that's gonna be a problem. And there's more texture on this side. I tried a painting technique that actually made more texture on here. And so that might pose a problem as well as I'm sanding. So the only way to do this, the only way to learn sometimes is to just try it. And so I'm trying it for the second time. And if I mess up this guitar, I'm sure the Weisses will forgive me. They're very nice people. So a couple of things I'm learning here, I'm, I'm using a really light pressure, but I notice that any pressure that I use, if I keep it towards the center of the guitar, I try and keep it as even as possible, but especially when I'm sanding off the edge of the guitar, I really try and keep the pressure towards the, the main body of the guitar, because if I put too much pressure on the end, the, the sandpaper digs into the edge of the guitar. I'm not really sure how much sanding I have to do before I can switch sandpapers, but I think I'm getting close. I'm down to the 2,500 grit paper. This is gonna be my last pass on this before I try and do a polish. It's looking good, it's looking good. It's not totally smooth. You can still see that it's still a little kind of speckly there, but it feels super smooth. It can fool my hand, but not my eyes. So far, what I've learned is I feel like I was using too much water to start. And secondly, I was using a block before and that worked okay. And I have seen a bunch of stuff recommending using a sanding block for this, but I'm, I disagree. For me, just using my hands seemed to give me more control and I didn't eat into the lacquer at all the way that I did with the block. The block is really where I got those like two or three scuff marks that are just like dug really deep into the lacquer all the way down to the guitar. Also, this is taking forever. <laughs> I thought I'd pop into the garage, spend maybe an hour on this. It's been like two and a half hours and I'm sweating like crazy and I haven't even gotten to the part that I'm like the most excited about yet, but I'm plowing through it. I'm making it happen. Tonight's the night. It's gonna, it's gonna be finished. It's gonna be beautiful, beautiful. I am now going to polish the guitar using car polish. It's another thing that I read online that people say works. So with that in mind, I'm gonna start on the back of the guitar cause I don't trust it. looks amazing. I hope that it shows up as well on the camera as it does in real life. But you can see like depth and shine and sparkle Barnaby. This is the area that I did the, the buffing on. 
and that's the area that I didn't. You can see the ring light. It's like a mirror almost. I love this color too. I'm so sad that I did this, but it's okay. These are learning guitars. I am learning things. I am learning how to do this. All right, there she is. I think there's some more polishing I could do once the guitar is all put together, but I would not feel satisfied tonight, even though it's 1 a.m. right now. I primarily make these videos after the kids go to sleep. Anyway, I would not feel right going to bed tonight without seeing the guitar put together. So let's take the masking tape off, let's bolt on this neck, let's take a look at it, and then let's get some sleepy time. Look at this! This looks like a professional guitar right here! I really like the way this looks. I love the neck. I think I did a great job on the neck. Way to go me. And the body looks really cool. I think I can probably polish it up a little bit more. It does have a nice shine to it. Uh, the moon is there. It's just, it's all very subtle. Today we are getting into the hardware. We're gonna do some wiring. We're gonna put on some tuners. We're gonna try out the tremolo system. And because there's some new techniques that I'm gonna be using on this guitar, there might be some frustration and, and difficult times. So I'm gonna start off today by doing something that I know will be satisfying, that I know will work, and I'm gonna oil the fretboard. I knew that would be satisfying. Look at this fretboard now. It's just like, that rosewood just woke up and I think it looks even better now. It brought together the whole guitar. Before that wood was like really dry. Who knows how long it's been sitting in a box. I don't think they conditioned it before they sent it out to me. And now, now it looks like, yeah, I wanna play that. I wanna play that guitar. The next step is to put on the tuners. For this entire guitar, there are no instructions. I'm gonna be doing some wiring soon, which uh, last time I relied on instructions very heavily. So. Uh, this will be an interesting experiment to figure out <laughs> where everything goes and how it works without any instructions at all, but uh, I'm up for the challenge. The tuning heads are in place and I was just about to kind of do a dry run with this, which is the tremolo system. And I realized something that I didn't know because I've never used one of these before. I had masked off this whole area because I didn't want to get paint in there and make it difficult to slide things in. But this has a bunch of clearance. So you can see underneath it into the guitar, which means this really light natural wood is going to show up underneath the system. <sighs> which is a little disappointing. So what I'm going to do is paint that area real quick let it dry for about an hour, and then put everything in. All right. I just masked off the rest of the guitar real quick, sprayed a little bit of black in there, and uh, I, you know what, it's inside the guitar, it's not gonna be seen. I just didn't want it to be glaring that that part of the guitar wasn't finished. So I just wanted a little bit of black in there, and, and it looks fine, it looks good. I'm excited that I spotted that before I installed everything. And, uh, and now get back into installing that hardware. So as I said before, I don't know a whole lot about this, but these two pegs, I believe just seat themselves right in here. And then this will live in this zone right here. And it'll be able to rock back and forth. And it gets held in place by tension. And the tension comes from springs that are installed here and sit in the back of the guitar here. So right now I need to put in this claw, which will hold the springs in place. So for some reason in this kit, this pickup does not quite fit into the cavity that they've put into the guitar. I have a couple options. I could cut into the guitar or I could file down the pickup. I'm gonna try filing down the pickup first just because I don't wanna mess with the finish of the guitar and there's a lot of extra material on the 
outsides of the pickup. And if that doesn't work, then I'll take a chisel to the guitar and try and open up that cavity a little bit. Another thing about pickups is that they're magnetized and I don't want any of the metal shavings to end up on the pickup, so I'm wrapping it up in a cloth and that way when I take the cloth off, it'll take a lot of the shavings with it, in theory. Filing didn't work so well, so I'm going at it with a chisel now. So here's where things start getting a little more complicated, and uh... And I start getting a little less sure of myself. Basically, there's no wiring diagram for this guitar. It looks like you have one volume, one tone, I don't know which is which, and I've never wired up a guitar like this one before. So figuring out, you know, how it all goes. I think this has a transistor on it, which I think means that it's the tone. You guitar people out there are probably yelling at me if I'm wrong, so thank you for that. You can go ahead and tell me in the comments. I don't mind, I want to learn, uh, that's what this whole thing's about. So if you know something I don't know, I always read the comments and I'm always super appreciative of people telling me in a nice way how I could have done better on these projects because this whole thing is a learning process for me. I have to figure out how these wire up to the switch, then how they wire up to the power supply, and then how they wire up to the actual pickups. So, figure it out. I just did my best guess on the wiring of this guitar. Before I close it all up, I need to test it out by stringing one string and plugging it in and seeing if I could electrocute it. I'm turning on the amp for the first time. It's all plugged in. A lot of buzz. That's not good, whatever that sound is. I think maybe it's not ground properly. That means I gotta do some rewiring. It wouldn't have made sense if I had wired it correctly just by guessing, I guess. So <laughs> now I've got to go back in and really like fine tune it and try again. But um, for now, I got to stop because I have other responsibilities. Goodbye, guitar. I'll come back to you in a little bit. Hi, everyone. It is a new day. I am still trying to figure out what is wrong with this guitar and how to fix it. I think because it's a Halloween guitar, it might be haunted. But probably not. There's probably just a problem with the grounding. I'm going to explain what that is and why that might be and how I'm going to try and figure it out. And hopefully we can get this guitar up and running and, uh, and making beautiful noise that is an anytime I touch any metal part of it. So I went out and bought one of these. It's a multimeter. And if I turn it to here and put these two things on the metal of the guitar, it'll tell me if electric current is running nicely through it. Basically with an electric guitar, anything that's metal on it needs to be connected in some way. The ground wire is connected to one of the volume things, that's connected to a switch, connected to the tone, connected to the jack, a whole lot of connections, but they all do need to be connected. And if they aren't connected properly, you have a grounding issue. And when you have a grounding issue, you get weird buzzes and sounds and things. Right now, I'm gonna go through and check all the connections between everything and make sure that we've got a nice electrical flow going and figure out what wire I need to replace in order to make that buzzing sound go away. At least that's the theory based on all of the research that I've done in the past couple days. We have our ground wire, which is connected to this piece of metal here, and our switch. This little thing should jump up if the connection's good. Looking pretty good. Oh no, there it is. Yeah, that's a good connection. We're looking pretty good. I think the culprit is the blue wire, so I'm going to change out that blue wire, which is actually two wires. You can see right here, it looks like they took the insulation from this wire and connected it here, and then the actual inner wire and connected it here. Since I don't have an insulated wire to work with, I'm gonna just use two wires and hope for the best.
Okay, so I replaced that wire with two other wires. You can see here what they did with the wire. This part of the wire was surrounding all of this and they just pulled it to one side and used the insulation as one of the connections. So they basically used one wire to do two wires job, which I think is okay. Like a lot of guitars I've seen use this technique, but I switched this one out for two separate wires. So instead of a blue one with a white one inside, now I have a yellow one and a red one. They're all connected to the same places. I checked it with the multimeter. It seems like it's gonna be good, but uh, the only way to really know is to plug it in and try it out. Okay, we're plugged into the amp. Let's turn it on. Should know in a second here. Anytime I touch metal, man, I don't know what's going on here. I have been trying so many different things. I've cleaned up almost all the connections to all the different parts. And what I realized just now from doing a little research, I think I crossed some wires. And I think if I uncross those wires, we'll get rid of the noise. That's my hope. I'm just as hopeful as when I started today, but I wasn't just a second ago. From everything I'm seeing, the noise comes from a grounding issue. And a lot of the grounding is coming off of the top of this. You see how all these wires are coming off, not these ones here on the side, but all these ones on the top, they're all soldered to the top of this here. One of the ground wires goes into here to the bridge that's connecting the, the string, the guitar string to everything. One of the ground wires goes to the top of this tone pot. One of the ground wires goes right here in the very center of the switch. And one of the ground wires, this yellow one, goes through here to right here. There are two spots to connect a wire where the jack comes in. One is on the outside and one is at the very tip of this. The one that's at the very tip right now is set to be the ground wire, but that's not where the ground wire goes. It goes on this side. So my hope right now is I switch the yellow wire and the red wire and no sound. Wouldn't that be fun? Let's try another experiment. Let's see. Let's see if it works. All right, I'll check back in with you in a little bit. I have been battling with this guitar all day, and guess what? Guess what? It's nighttime now, but I have made a little bit of progress. I'll show you what's going on. Mm -hmm. You hear it? So I switched some wires around in the switch, which is this part right here. I switched this black wire for this yellow wire and that did the trick. Here's the problem. This right here is my tone knob. What? Watch what happens when I turn it. That's really weird. And I haven't been able to find much online about this. A lot of people were saying that the ground on it might be messed up on one side. So what I'm gonna do is take both wires off, put new wires on, see if that fixes it. And if it doesn't, I'm giving up. I'll just say, hey, sorry, the tone knob doesn't work, but the rest of the guitar functions great. It is a learning process. And I know the Weiss Life. They're very nice. They're very friendly people. They will be okay with it. Also, they're gonna be here in like two days. So I gotta get this done. Okay, at this point I'm calling it. It's, uh, it works. It works cleanly unless you try and use the tone knob. If you try and use the tone knob, it doesn't work. It's just kind of how it's gonna be, I guess, with this guitar. At any rate, I'm out of time. I can't, I can't add anything more to it. I don't feel defeated though. I feel like I've learned a lot of things and there's more to learn, which is kind of exciting in its own way. Also, if you know anything about electronics or know anyone that knows anything about electronics that might be able to give me some insight on this, please let them know about this video. Write anything that you know about it in the comment section because I read the comment section and I see the Weisses all the time. So after I give them this guitar, if I find an answer that's like, yes, that's it, that's exactly how to fix this, I'll take the guitar back from them, fix it and give it back. I'm, I'm really looking forward to like knowing how to do all this stuff and the best way to learn is from other people. And I'm jumping into this and just trying it, but I love hearing from other people, hearing their suggestions. So if you guys know what's going on here, basically the tone, it sounds great when the tone's turned all the way down, but if you turn the tone up even a little bit, as it goes, it gets progressively more staticky. So if that 
if that's something that any of you have experienced or something that you're, you're like, oh, I know why that is, please tell me in the comment section. I'd love to hear it. But for now, I'm going to put the guitar back together and get it all ready to give to the Weisses in just a couple days here. Thanks for watching today's video. If you like learning something new, seeing someone struggle as they learn, <laughs> be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications so that you can know when I post a new video. I post new videos every Friday. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you next time.